Hello and welcome back to Crypto Live Leak. My name is Ken and today we have the pleasure to introduce to you Bo from Tazygator and he's here to answer some questions on baking today. Bo, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Hey, hey, thanks for inviting me here again. It's glad to be back. Um, nice to talk to the Tezos folks again. Yeah, go Tezos and it's glad to have you back. Last video that we made, unfortunately the audio wasn't too good. so. Uh, we had a lot of fans that were disappointed in that, so we're going to try to redo this with perfect audio this time for you guys. Yep. Um, so cool. So first thing we wanted to touch on is you guys actually released a new feature uh, yesterday or today with the fiat reporting feature for your delegate baking website. You want to touch a little bit on that? Yeah, sure. There's actually uh, two parts to it. Uh, one is that we're going to report uh, every payment that comes out. We're going to report five different uh, fiat pairs on uh, the value of those. Uh, and, and that's going to be for each payment that goes out. Uh, also, you'll also be able to see a rolling total throughout each year what the sum is of each individual payment at each you know, uh, uh, trading uh, point in time. Um, so, so it's not just uh, a sum of all your Tezos multiplied by one value at one point in time. It's, it's the sum of uh, throughout year all payments and the value at that point in time. So you'll quickly be able to get uh, just a straight, uh, straight number that you can use as your you know, complete year-end total for that. Okay, so it seems like you have the projected year-end total as well as the cycles payments uh, numbers oh, broken down into fiat. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we recently added that one a couple weeks ago as well. Uh, whereas uh, in, in the past, you know, we were only reporting actual real-time stats, um, and you know, I don't think anybody else was doing that. Everybody else was only reporting what they projected earnings were per cycle and so we actually added that in there as well so we, we actually get future cycles now as well as real-time performance uh, throughout the cycle that's active. Yeah that's awesome I mean that's a great feature to have especially for people that are looking to diligently stay on top of any uh, proposed tax filings they may have at the end of the year if they want to sort of set themselves up to be in a good position they definitely want to utilize uh, the feature that you guys installed there so that's that's great to see it definitely differentiates you from a lot of the other bakers that I see available out there and if you wanted to screen share, go ahead and uh, show a little bit off of the website. And you can feel free to just talk as you go over the site there. Got it. Okay, so uh, when you first come into our, our site, I'm showing, I'm, hopefully you guys can see my screen right now. Uh, you'll, you'll come into a system status page. It, it kind of just shows you what the latest block that we've processed is, the, the real-time staking balance, earnings, whatnot, who all are constituents at the particular time. Uh, you can go to your own dashboard by going to the menu and just clicking on constituents. You're presented uh, then with a list of active constituents you can you know type in somebody and search for we'll search for this person right here I don't have any idea who that is um, but of course the blockchain is a public ledger so it's, it's visible to everybody there's, there's no point in trying to hide anything and so this is the dashboard for that individual person that I just told you right here we just randomly selected you can see uh, they've actually had all oh, they've been they've been baking with us for quite some time they've already had four payments here uh, you can see the four payments um, they've also uh, got some pending blockchains uh, release of uh, earnings that's going to come out after a few cycles and then we've got future performance uh, for future cycles that we expect. So we'll go ahead and click on this person's uh, payments. Uh, you can see right here, well we've got all, all four of their payments uh, and we've just got these columns here for each individual uh, fiat. You know, we've got US dollars, euros, Swiss francs, Korean won, and Jap Japanese won. Uh, and just, you know, every time it makes a payment out it goes and fetches that data uh, stores in the database and then you as the user wants to come check it out and yeah, here it is. So that was the first part. Uh, the second part is the year in total. Uh, of course right now there's only been 2018 so we're only going to see one one row in the database here. And that's 2018 and, and this particular user sums up 105 Tezos and you know, $147 or 172 in Euro. Actually I'm not quite sure about that. I might need to look relook at that one. Um, Swiss franc, and then uh, KRW and JPY. Wow, that's and so. And, and like I said, this uh, this is the obviously the Tezos sum will be the same uh, between the payments. That that would make sense that these would add up. The Tezos would add up, but the U.S. dollars isn't necessarily going to add up because each payment had a different value for U.S. dollars. So is that a live feed? I know that exchange rates ch uh, change consistently. Is that a like a snapshot FX rate yeah, that you guys apply? Yeah, it is. It's, it's a snapshot at the time that the payment was made, which is really the important piece that you want to uh, to capture, you know, for reporting. 
In other words, you know, you know let, let's say you're, you're doing this for tax purposes. You want you want to find out how much uh, Tezos you, you were paid at some particular point in time, and and that's the useful uh, of what I've got right here. Okay. Perfect. So that's actually important to note. So the correct way to report here, it seems, take a snapshot at the time payment was received. And that's what you've provided here using this tool available in five different currencies as you see listed. Uh, and this is what you'll be using for your tax reporting purposes, the number generated in that field. Excellent. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Cool. So was there any other features that you wanted to uh, demonstrate while we have the screen up? I think I showed the other one. Let me see. Go back to the... Uh the all cycles, you know, like like I said, we're now reporting on future cycles that are coming in, you know, as they as they you know pop in snapshots in, into the blockchain. And like I said, I'm not quite sure, but I think we're the, one of the very few people who are actually reporting live, real time, as you can see right here, um, and and the future stats is what's going on. Like I said, we, we report the current cycle right here, and you can kind of see what's going on right here. We've got 2,900 currently in cycle 16. And you know, every second, every couple of minutes, you'll see this number add up as we get another endorsement. Okay, wow. So yeah, that's another thing that differentiates you from a lot of other bakers is not only do you show projections, but you also also show that live uh, actual payout, the live actual back, uh, bakery awards taking place yes, within current exactly. cycle. Right. Yeah. So that's excellent. So uh, moving on to a next question here. Uh, so you guys providing an excellent service. You guys started out with a. Uh, I would say a below average fee that you guys charge that 10% is what you guys started at. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, a split between overall bacon rewards. So if someone delegated to you, they would get 90% of those rewards and then you would keep the 10% as a fee just to maintain operations. So you guys released a statement um, in the past month here that you guys were going up on that fee. Do you want to just clarify on that? Right, and that's not even active yet. That's going to be active in cycle 23. Uh, but basically with the price of Tesla's falling like it has, um, it was just really hard for us to, you know, deep dig in our own pockets to pay the bills, you know, for the time being. Um, we, we expect that we hope that uh, at some point in the near future the price of Tesla will go up. We can reduce fees again. Like I said, it's, it's all about us attracting uh, constituents, you know, to our service. And so, you know, a way we can do that is by providing, you know, all these features in our system that we got built, you know, as well as being most cost effective. So that's actually something really interesting to hear you say. Uh, just as I heard you talking, it started making me think this is almost you're weighing your options to participate in the, we'll say, mining process here. Uh, a lot of the ways where, in proof of work, the miners have to make a decision on whether or not to keep paying the electricity bill to keep their computers on to mine right. um, if it's not profitable for them, if the return right. is not profitable. So that's sort of what it, it sounded like uh, when you're saying that you need to go up on the fee as the price of the XTZ dropped. So I almost wonder, right. if the price keeps dropping, uh, would you continue to lower the fee, and if the price went up, would you revert the fee back to the 10% or the lesser percentage? Right. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, theoretically, if the price just drops and drops and drops almost to nothing, then I'll just be forced to kind of put everything on hold and maybe just run a run a baker in my back in my back room on a PC, right? You know, as it sits right now, I've built a system that's got it's got two data centers. There's a big cloud portion to it with a bunch of cloud DMZ nodes, um, and so you know, the professional type of system I built, you know, it's kind of expensive to run. Um, and if the price of Tezos is just not there to support it, then you all may have to look at other things. Yeah, and hopefully it doesn't come to that. Um, but yes, we, we, we do you know, foresee it at some point the price of Tezos is going to go back up, and that will be one way for us to differentiate and, and get more customers uh, is by lowering fees again, you know, as soon as whenever that can happen. Awesome. Yeah, that's excellent to hear. Some great insights there from you know, one of the leading bakers here in the Tezos protocol. So great stuff. Um, so I wanted to lead into the final segment here. We had a lot of questions, people asking, hey, I, I delegated my XTZ month, a month ago and I haven't received any reward. And there was uh, confusion about a, the reward cycles. How many need to pass before the reward is actually generated and how many pass in a pending state? So do you want to just right. provide some clarification on that? Right. Well, so as soon as you delegate to somebody, um, it's going to take at least seven cycles before the blockchain credits that delegation for you to earn rewards. Um, after that, you know, let's say your let's say your baker, your your the delegate that you selected, burn some rewards. Uh, there'll be five cycles that those rewards are frozen, and then they can be released to you. Then the alternative to that, though, is that of course, let's say you're delegated to somebody and you switch. Well, that's going to not take effect for five for seven cycles later. But during those seven cycles, you're still delegated to the other baker, and you'll still get you should get credited. You know, with them. You know, if they're going to do the honorable thing. Um, 
and that's obviously what we you know what we'll be doing you know if anybody leaves us then you know the system automatically you know still will, will no, notice that they had uh, in the in the blockchain and the protocol itself had credited them towards our system and we're just going to pay out just like we always would have and as soon as you know one cycle comes up and we see oh this person was not actually delegated in the cycle for this particular blockchain snapshot well then of course we can re recalculate all rewards without them being a participant okay so just let me just repeat this to make sure i have this right so say i'm just delegating from a k1 account to your address and mm -hmm. let's say for example i have 100 xtz in this delegation address well, uh, you know, midway through a cycle, I decide to move 50 XTZ to a different delegation address. What actually happens to the remaining 50 I leave in the original delegation address okay. to Tazigator? Right. Okay, so for seven cycles after that, you'll still be credited in our system uh, for that 400. Okay. Got it. And then after that, you'll be credited with 50 for us and 50 for the other delegate. Okay, so it would be a seven cycle delay. And is there right. any uh, fi additional five cycle waiting period for those? Right, and then for rewards, exactly. That's, that's an additional five cycle waiting period for, for rewards to be paid out. Okay. Yeah, so a total of about seven, so a total of about 12 cycles, I guess. Uh, 30, yeah. it's, it's quite, it's, 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 a, it's a period of time. Okay, so, and the payment method on how those rewards come back to my account, that's another thing mm -hmm. that we don't really have clarification on uh, in the community. Okay. So it yeah, seems so like you guys specifically go to a K1 account, but that sure, sure. is that manual. Is that uh, something automated? Well, in, in our system, it's automated. We've you know, you know, I've, I've built everything as I can to be automated as much as possible to, to just reduce the workload that I have to do. Um, you know, so it's, it's when it comes down to it, it's up to each delegate. So you know, we're doing it automatically. Other delegates have to do it manually. Uh, I think there's there's only a few delegates that are technically inclined enough to actually have automatic payments. I think we were one of the very first uh, to do it. You know, as soon as as soon as the payouts for cycle seven came available, I think is in cycle cycle thirteen or cycle twelve or something like that. Uh, we we were paid out within the first few blocks, uh, and and that's because the system we had automated it for us. Um, now what we're doing is we're paying the payouts out to the KT one account. Uh, the benefit of that is that your rewards then automatically redelegate to us seven cycles after that that payout happens, right? Um, so that that's just less work that you the user has to do. Um, it could be that somebody pays out to the TZ1 account um, that you know that, that manages that KT1 account, um, or not, or they could not pay out at all, right? Like I said, when it comes down to it, it's it's the delegate's responsibility to, to make those decisions, you know, to handle things appropriately. Yeah, so that's actually another uh, good point to make there. It's all in the delegate's hands on whether or not to make right. this payout. So uh, there were some posts in the Reddit threads recently that said there are. Uh, possibly some bakers that are not holding their end of the bargain and paying out the rewards oh, in a timely manner. Yeah. So that's good to see that you guys were one of the first, if not the first, to make payments uh, for the, the rewards that came out available in cycle 12 there. So that's yeah, excellent to hear. I think there were a few that actually paid earlier. You know, some delegates that have a flat percentage that they pay out just a flat rate, um, I think they're paying out you know, as soon as those rewards come in. Um, obviously, you know, the payout on those are going to be much smaller, and that, and that's why they can afford to do that because they're just not paying out nearly as much to the subscribers we are. Like, we're, I think our very first payment was on the order of like over twenty percent, um, and it start, slowly started to come down. I think our last one was on the order of around thirteen percent, which, which is you know, because it leaves and bounds above beyond what these other delegates here are you know are just going to pay you a five percent fee. Yeah, so you heard it here first, right out of Bo's mouth. The current cycle we're paying about thirteen percent. So if you guys haven't yet delegated. Tazigator is a great option. You're gonna receive, you know, current cycles still paying 13% per annum. So, I mean, the power of compound interest, once you start uh, and have waited those 12 cycles to start getting the payments back to your KT1 account, in the case of Tazigator here, you can start then earning that compound interest um, every two and a half days, essentially, right? So that's the uh, seventh wonder of the world right there. <laughs> seventh wonder. Yeah, yeah, right here in 2018, huh? Yeah. <laughs> So as always, Bo, it's really great to have you on Crypto Live Leak. We have uh, full support for Tazigator and all their baking operations within Tezos. And we hope to hear, have you again soon and uh, hear from you again soon. Oh, yeah. Hey, thanks a lot again. You guys have a good night. Uh, thanks to all your viewers out there. Appreciate it. All right. Take care until next time. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Bye-bye.